a Lamborghini Huracan doesn't start the same way that your car starts, okay? If you want to turn on your car, you got to sit behind the driver's seat, you got to take a key, and you got to put it behind the steering wheel, and you got to turn it, and hopefully it's going to start. If you're in a Lamborghini, it's kind of like launching a nuclear missile, all right? Did you ever see a cartoon where they try to launch like a nuke? There's a red, there's a cover covering a big red button. You have to open that cover, and then you can press the button. That's exactly how you start a Lamborghini Huracan, okay? And this cover is what we're going to be modeling today. It's going to be episode five of my Lamborghini Huracan Patreon series. All right. So if you want to see more of these episodes, go check out my Patreon. I'm going to need Thomas. Shout out Thomas Cole and 3D to help me out in this video because the topology is going to be messy. And also shout out to Sebi from all the way from Oradea. Now look, here's the problem with this thing. It's going to have to be a perfect sub D workflow. And everything on a Lamborghini, if you pay attention to it, everything is designed in like a hexagon kind of style. There's a bunch of hexagons. The steering wheel is kind of shaped like a hexagon, okay? If you look at the AC, it's shaped like a hexagon. And this little thing is also hexagon. This is on the center console in the middle of the car between the driver and his chick, okay? So here's how we're going to start this shape. Here's what I'm thinking. I might be wrong. We're going to see what, how Thomas would do this. I, I challenge Thomas for his next video. To do this because he's gonna do it better than me all right but here's my take I'm gonna make a hexagon and I'm gonna use that hexagon to just start shaping everything out of it and my hexagon is gonna make this thing in the middle here okay and then I'll try extruding this part down here then I'll extrude this little bit over here and we have to be very careful because we want to make sure that we don't have any super long faces or anything like that it's gonna ruin everything okay so I think we're going to be able to do this with, I think we're probably going to have to use some triangles, but we're going to see how it goes. Tomas is definitely going to be able to do it with no triangles. I don't think I can do that. So here's the deal. We need to have a hexagon and you can make a hexagon by just adding a circle and just changing the number of vertices on the circle that you add to six in this little menu down here. Okay. And then I'm going to reshape this hexagon. I want to make it a bit longer. So it has to be kind of long and thin, but pay attention to these edges on the side here. Because if we just scale up a hexagon on the y-axis, it's not going to be good enough because then we also stretch out the faces on the side, okay? We don't want to do that too much. So we have to take these two vertices and we have to bring them closer together because that's going to retain the shape that we have here in the middle, all right? So in the end, this middle shape, I can't really get a blueprint for this picture or for this shape so i don't really know what the exact dimensions are i'm just kind of eyeballing it all right but it's going to be something like this it's going to be a bit a bit a bit more than a 90 degree angle in here on the inside okay so it has to be something kind of like this and now if you notice if you were to look at it from the side view let's say this is going to be the top part over here this part is going to be on the left side and this lower part is going to be on the right side all right and if you look at this from side view this part goes up a little bit to get to here. So if you look at it from side view, it's going to be sort of like this. And then I think that it would keep the same angle down here. So if we select this stuff, it has to be a little bit lower. So it has to go kind of this way. And now I would, I think the best thing to do here is if we fill this and we extrude it, then we have this inner little edge here. So you have these little faces on the inside here defined by this line, limited by this line. And it's going to continue to go in a loop over here. And we can use that to extrude out everything else in the other directions. So let's try to do that. Okay. Now I'm going to take these three vertices on the top here. And I'll use those to shape out whatever's happening up here. So for now we can just push it backwards a little bit like this. Scale it up a little bit because it's supposed to be a little bit wider. Notice how this line over here, it continues in the same direction as this line on the inside over here. All right. Which means that when we go from top view, when we extrude this, we have to scale this thing far enough on the Y axis to make sure that it, it continues to follow the same path, to make sure it keeps the same, almost the same, let's say the same vector. Okay. And once we do that, we also have to adjust the shape a little bit. We have to make sure that the dimensions are fitting properly. This has to probably slide inwards a little bit. This has to be a little bit smaller and it has to be pushed a little bit further to the back. Okay. 
I'm not gonna be super precise with all these little details and stuff. I just want to get the topology right, and then later we can make some adjustments to the to the proportions and whatever else we have to do. Okay, so this top part, in my view, it's something like this. It's more or less something like this, and then later we're gonna come back here and extrude this down a little bit, and do whatever else we have to do back there. But then we get to the back part. So we have to take this, these three edges back here, and we're gonna extrude those. But we have to try to keep the same direction. If we look at it from side view, we have to try to keep the same direction. Now, if this was like a purely hard surface model, it wouldn't matter that much. When I say hard surface, I'm talking about like not subdivision workflow, all right? Even though that's still technically hard surface, and I would define it as something else. I would define subdivision surface as more like organic model. But anyway, that's a different story. Since we're gonna subdivide this, it doesn't have to be that flat because it's gonna be nice and smooth anyway. It's gonna be round, so these little changes in the angle that you can see over here in your hard view, they're not gonna be that visible, so we don't have to worry too much about that, okay? So we can just go from a side view, we can just kind of try and get this approximately right. So this surface over here at the moment, it's supposed to be like this, and then it's supposed to continue. Imagine there's a curve going up here. It goes over the hole and it kind of bends down, okay? And there's somebody racing a Lambo on the streets right behind me. So we have to try to keep that in mind when we, uh, when we push this vertex up, okay? We wanna try and get it on the same curve. So this is maybe gonna have to be a little bit lower. It's gonna have to be something like this. And whatever's happening over here, we're gonna have to take care of that in a moment. We're gonna have to figure out a way to, to connect this over here. But it's basically gonna be something like a triangle and we're gonna get back to that in a moment. So now that we have some geometry over here, okay, we're gonna use these edges to extrude this back part the same way that we extruded this part at the top here, okay? But we also have to be careful about the size of this. It's gonna be something like, it looks like this is a little bit longer than this piece over here, but not much. It's maybe like 10, 15% longer. And if we push it down, it's gonna be something like this. And now we just have to have a face which connects this point here and this point over here. So in our model, that's this point and this point, all right? So this is where things get kind of tricky because this is where we have to, over here, it looks like a triangle. That's the problem. But we can't really have a triangle here because that's gonna mess up our topology too much. And on top of that, this is supposed to be a little bit lower down, which means this is probably supposed to be a little bit higher up, kind of like this. And then this is supposed to be a little bit higher up as well, probably. So this way, technically, we can now fit a circle in here, although the proportions are still kind of messed up. Or we can fit a triangle here, which it has a triangular shape, but we can't let that happen, all right? Because if we have a triangle, that's gonna mess with the subdivision surface workflow, all right? So what I'm thinking we're going to do is we're gonna leave this as a triangle for now, or as like a triangular shape for now, as like a quad. This guy's doing exactly the same thing as we're doing in here. And we're gonna run a loop that goes from this vertex through here, and it's gonna continue down here, because otherwise we have a quad which is shaped like a triangle, okay? Which is one of the worst things that can happen to you. So let's see what we can figure out, okay? Maybe it's better if we do one side, and then we delete it. We delete the other side and we use a mirror modifier so shit happens on both sides at the same time. So I'm going to use a mirror modifier on the y-axis. And now, I'm going to try and extrude some of this geometry downwards. And if I add a cut between these two edges, I can subdivide them. And I have a new cut here, which I can slide up until this point, at which I want to connect it with this vertex on the inside of the shape, okay, with J. So now we got a triangle here, but this is a quad, and it's no longer a quad which is shaped like a triangle or even something worse, okay? Because if you have a quad which is shaped like a triangle, it's gonna give you problems. Let me, let me demonstrate this, okay? Let's say we have a quad like this, and we shoot it down, and then we're gonna subdivide this, okay? And now we wanna add some loop cuts over here, and it's, it's kind of fucked up because now we have these long edges. It's really a hard shape to control. It's a hard shape to work with, okay? So you want to avoid having that, and we avoided that by just cutting an extra shape over here. It can be a triangle over here, we can probably get away with that, but it shouldn't be a triangle, a, a, a quad which is shaped like a triangle. That's what we're trying to avoid here, all right? So now since we have the shape more or less done, let's get a little preview of what this looks like before we do some final adjustments like this little curve down here, okay? So I can subdivide this, 
I don't know if you guys can see my string cast keys over here in the corner because they're kind of hidden behind some other bullshit. But let me lower them down a little bit. But what I did just there is I selected this object and I pressed Control 2 or Control 3 and that automatically adds some subdivision surface to your object. All right. It adds a subdivision surface modifier with the number of subdivisions that you, uh, pr uh, the number that you pressed, right? So Control 3, three subdivisions. And when you add some subdivision, now we can start adding loop cuts to make this shit a little bit tighter. We can take this, we can bevel it with a bevel which has a shape of one, okay? So it's a sharp corner, we can keep this same edge. It's just like adding loop cuts to both sides, all right? And now we're gonna take this one, we're also gonna bevel this side. We're gonna see how we can add a loop on the inside here. If we add a loop on the inside here, that kind of messes up with this part because this is a triangle, okay? So it's gonna give us some problems, but we're gonna to try to get back to that in a second. And let's just figure out, if we add a loop cut over here, that should work fine, okay? And I think we can also add another cut on the inside this way. Now watch what's happening here. We got a little bit of twisting going on here. And let's see if we can cor uh, correct our topology a little bit over here. Because right now, we have a curve or a cut that goes over here. And when we subdivide it, it's kind of a little bit twisted. But maybe if we add a new loop cut over here, it's going to push all this shit inwards a little bit. And it's going to prevent this little wrinkle from happening there. Which is kind of what happens when you have these kind of long faces and you have shit on the corner. So we prevented this from folding over itself and creating this weird artifact thing by just adding the loop cut and pushing it inwards, okay? And now it looks a lot cleaner. And let's have a look at what else we can add here to improve this a little bit further. I don't think we need to do much more. I think we're almost there. This, I would like to push it a little bit further up. And maybe afterwards I'll take this uh, edge over here and I'll push it forwards a little bit just to make this little curved shape at the, uh, at the back side here, okay? So now, I'm getting tons of lag because I'm using my temporary rig because I'm traveling at the moment. I don't have my computer with me. I'm just using an office laptop to record this shit. That's why you guys got to deal with some lag for a little while. But now we can use this geometry that we extruded down here to shape this curve on the underside of the button. Okay. And to do that, we just have to slide some of these vertices up. Maybe add another loop cut here. Slide this up. Maybe push another loop cut down here to the bottom. And that's gonna give us this kind of curvy shape. We just have to make sure we don't push this too far up, okay? And that's gonna give us more or less the shape for this button that we're trying to accomplish, all right? And now if you wanna play smart, you can take this and extrude it a little bit just to make, make it look like there's an edge down here. I'm not gonna bother filling all this shit up on the underside. I, can't, I don't really need to see this stuff, so I'm not gonna bother. But if you want to really do your topology correct, if you're getting tested by a studio, when studios are trying to hire you, they're going to give you some shit like this. They're going to be like, okay, let's see how your topology is on this thing. And then you got to spend the next how many hours modeling this shit and fucking around. It's, it's pointless. What the fuck is the point of this, right? Maybe they got the reasons. But you can get some pretty damn good gigs modeling with this style. Okay, I can tell you that from my experience. So fuck all that topology bullshit, all right? If it looks good, if it renders good, it's going to be good. And you can get a lot of good jobs like this, all right? It's not going to be maybe great. Even for video games. If you're modeling for video games, there's no point modeling shit that you can't see, all right? So all this extremely complicated topology bullshit, in my, in my book, it's a joke. Apparently movie studios, apparently movie studios require you to do this because for some reason it's just a better workflow. It UV unwraps better. What the fuck? I, I've, I've never had problems unwrapping shit with my style. I've got great gigs. I've got great results, so I don't know what the problem is. Maybe Tomas can explain this to me in a video because he actually works in a studio. And he's the one who taught me a lot about topology. So maybe he's going to be able to tell me a little bit more about why. Why this is so important. If the end result looks good, then what the fuck is the point of spending twice as much time on shit that's unnecessary? That, that's my take on it. So maybe somebody can tell me in the comments what to, what to the answer to my, my sick insight is there. But we're more or less finished. Let me just check another little detail. Let's try a different matte cap to make this look cute. All right. We give a default matte cap and make it red so we can look at this in its full glory. All right. It's going to be something like this. I think maybe we can add a loop cut here as well just to make it a little bit prettier. Okay. And now we have our beautiful Lamborghini start button or the cover for the start button so you don't accidentally start your car with some woman's heel when you're banging her on the, on the seat of a Lamborghini. All right. But that's going to be episode five for my Lamborghini series. Next, we're going to do something else. Maybe we're going to do the other stuff around this button over here on the inside. We're going to do the rest of the center console. 
don't think I have a picture of it. But anyway, I'm gonna see you guys there. Let me know what you think.